Welcome to Dunamis number four, the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. In the past 40 years, the church in the West has rediscovered the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Um, believers are finding that healing uh, was something that Jesus intended for all disciples, for all time. Because, you see, healing not only confirms the truth of the gospel, healing is a foretaste of the coming kingdom, a kingdom which will come in fullness at the end of the age where death and disease will be forever and finally vanquished. So, let's jump in. This course has four basic sections. The first is the biblical and theological framework of Jesus' ministry of healing. The second is a study of Jesus' ministry of physical healing and our participation in it. The third is a study of Jesus' ministry of inner and relational healing and our participation in it. And finally, it will be how do we prepare ourselves and our congregations to enter into this ministry of healing. So what's the purpose of this course? Well, one, uh, this course is not providing a method or specific therapy. Uh, rather, it is providing a ministry of prayer where the Holy Spirit can work to bring supernatural breakthrough that very often results in healing, deep healing. Two, this is not a ministry that seeks to replace more traditional therapies uh, or methods of healing. Uh, we love doctors, nurses, hospitals, psychiatrists, counselors. This work is meant to be complementary to their work in bringing healing. And three, we're not promising with this ministry specific physical or emotional healing. Rather, we're providing a context for the Holy Spirit to work His gracious will to bring breakthrough in our lives so that there can be increased blessing and fullness of life. I'm not an expert in healing. I'm just a regular believer, a regular pastor, who just happened to stumble into this ministry of healing 10 years ago when I was seeking to go deeper in my walk with Christ. But since that time, I have prayed for many people to be healed and have seen a lot of people be healed. I've also seen a lot of people who have not yet been healed. But I've seen a lot of breakthrough and things have been, that have just brought a lot of blessing and a lot of fullness of life. I'll be using personal stories to illustrate these lessons as I go along. But I imagine many of you listening to this have your own stories of healing that you've witnessed and also ways in which you yourselves have been agents of healing. I encourage you to share these stories during your small group time. Testimony builds faith. All right, let's dive into a brief biblical and theological framework for Jesus' ministry of healing. Now, God's original vision for all of creation was a set of harmonious relationships between every piece of the created order. And we see a glimpse of this in Genesis chapter 1, where he creates everything orderly. And then at the end, when he sees everything in this vast array, all of the heavens and the earth, and the plants, the animals, the fish of the sea, uh, people, animals, it said that God saw all that he had made and declared it was very good. God created our world to be healthy, um, to be in harmony between God and angels, and humans, animals, and plants. And the key to this harmony is they were all ordered under God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. 
After creating this wonderful world, God put humans in charge to exercise dominion in his name. Male and female, we were created um, with immense capabilities, with talents, uh, with strength, uh, to be in God's image, to exercise responsible dominion over this wonderful creation. Um, Speaking of male and female, it said that the Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. And so he created, he caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, now this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother be united to his wife and they shall become one flesh. God wished for there to be a partnership between these two created beings, male and female, to exercise this dominion. And he created our bodies to be vigorous and healthy. Sickness and death were not a part of God's original design. Uh, that only came later. God's original healthy intentions for our creation were distorted when our first parents decided through disobedience to be like God themselves by throwing off uh, the restraint or the God's loving uh, sovereign guidance in their lives and they said no we can be God on our own. This overreaching shattered the image of God for all humankind in our bodies, in our souls, our minds, our spirits. And then this sin, like a cancer, spread from individuals to um, our families, to our relationships. Uh, it resulted in broken marriages, dysfunctional families, racial hatred, uh, warring nations. The Bible describes this fall in graphic detail. For example, Genesis chapter 6. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. But Jeremiah crying out in chapter 17, the, hu the human heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And this human sin spread even to the animals and even to the earth to degrade them resulting in birth defects and floods and hurricanes and earthquakes. Uh, Paul records in Romans chapter 8 that the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. And in this last uh, scripture, we see not just a description of the problem, but also a hint of the solution. We'll turn to that now. And now for some good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, entered into our fallen world in order to redeem and restore it. And healing is a part of this redemptive work. C.S. Lewis uh, summed it up in a phrase from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe when he wrote that death itself would start working backwards. Now Jesus did this first by living a sinless life and then as a man, as a second Adam, sacrificing his life on the cross, thus paying the penalty for sin overcoming Satan's dominion over us, and then opening the door to the full redemption and restoration, not just of ourselves, but for all of God's created order. He established the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is the framework under which God brings full 
restoration and redemption to every part of our lives, every part of the created order, where again His loving dominion is realized in us and through us for the healing of ourselves, the healing of nations, the healing of our earth. Healing is a practical part of the outworking of our salvation in Jesus Christ. This begins with spiritual healing. Our spirits are healed when we ask forgiveness for our sins and receive the gift of eternal life. When we are born again, born from above, our spirits go from death to life. This is the basis for all other healing. Inner healing is when God restores our shattered souls. As we walk with Jesus as Lord, He begins to heal our wounded souls. Physical healing is where God restores His intended health and immortality to our physical bodies. And this is completed with the resurrection of the body. Um, as part of the kingdom of God, there is a restoration of our relationships. This begins with the most basic relationship between husband and wife, male and female, but it extends to our families, our communities, and to even to the nations. And in the kingdom of God, He is restoring the entire creation, uh, where man and animals, um, the created order, are all back under God's care. And in uh, human beings' responsible dominion, the environment is healed. We see this in fullness when there's a new heaven and a new earth. And one last thing. A major part of Jesus' ministry on earth was casting out devils. Uh, the devil has spirits with assignments for disease and death that are working throughout our world. And part of our healing work will be cooperating with Jesus to overcome these demons and canceling out their infernal assignments in ourselves and in each other. We'll introduce this topic in this series and we'll go more in depth in our next series, Dunamis 5. This healed kingdom is a present reality. Nevertheless, it is incomplete. Our complete healing awaits the return of Christ and the resurrection of our bodies to inhabit a new heaven and a new earth. This explains why Christians still get sick, are emotionally wounded, suffer loss, and face physical death. Miracles of healing are real. They are a great encouragement. Nevertheless, our total healing awaits the return of Christ and the resurrection of our bodies. We live in the now and the not yet. So what is the purpose of Christ's healing ministry and our participation in it? I think the answer ultimately is in the mystery of God's love. For in his love for us, he wishes to bring healing in us and through us, not just to our souls, but to every part of us and every part of his creation. And out of the same love, God calls us not only to be healed, but to be agents of healing in our world, to join Jesus in his work of making all things new. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, help us to stretch out in faith to embrace this marvelous supernatural ministry of healing that we might experience the great joy of being healed ourselves and that we might be agents to bring that healing to our world so that your love can be demonstrated in ways that are tangible and that will produce faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. And God bless you.